welcome back Design Squad and thanks a lot for sticking around for so long you know with extra learning and tutorial series and now the challenge I told you about making a burger challenge or making a product channel or some sort of modifier where you basically allow users to craft in a visual way their ending product and so this is my take on the same challenge because I told you I'm gonna take the same challenge you know otherwise it wouldn't really make sense to give you something to do and I'm just chilling and reviewing it and giving you feedback as you can see in my sketch I have this craft and ultimate burger and I have some introduction I have a few text field here where I allow users to have six options to choose from an idea is if they would let's say tap on one or the other arrow this would animate and flip through or change or you know do something and I'm gonna give them several options for each of these so they can select mayo instead of ketchup let's say and so forth and once we're happy we can just go next and go to a next page and maybe see the you know already made burger and click buy or something along those lines I'm gonna do it with dynamic panels first and then I'm gonna use also global variables to store the selections and also update these text fields so that when I open a new page I can read those selections and then just you know remake this burger dynamically one thing to note is exactly what I'm gonna use so as you can see beforehand I made as several PNG items with the ingredients which could overlap we don't have any background to them so I can showcase them kind of stacking them up nicely and I have several options per each of the category it's up to you what you would want to define but I just did that you know it helps me to quickly jump into it and make it happen without further ado let me just port all of this from my sketch to Axure really quickly Boom, boom, boom. And so I created this, as you can see in my outline, you're gonna see that there's a lot of text fields. There's one button, which is just a text field. And I'm quickly just gonna make it a button. You know, I'm saving time again, so I'm not making some of them properly. I'd rather focus on showing you how to do dynamic panels and global variables, right? So first and foremost, I'm gonna just rename these text fields where the values are gonna go for each of the selections. So one is gonna be one, bun let's say and then this is going to be two on demand and so forth so once that's done and i named every single text field exactly where our selections are going to go next thing is going to be that i'm going to create global variables if you go under project global variables you're going to see that i have nothing yet but now a good idea and I would recommend you to do is to create a global variable per each of these items again. One on demand. And I'm gonna default, give it a default value, which is select one. So whenever we override it, it's gonna be default to select one. Boom. And now once I define the global variables, next thing to do is start defining these bad boys and these you know selection fields because as you can see I have multiple images here the PNG files but they're not interactive yet and so first and foremost what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna define this which is basically the patty so I'm gonna make them into one dynamic panel because it's the same bread from both right even if it now you can see the tomato doesn't overlap but I can adjust that later that's totally fine and I'm gonna call that bun let's say bun dynamic or actually let's call it dp bun for dynamic panel bun and then i'm gonna create another dynamic panel for condiment dp condiment and then cheese as well which is the topping plus plus dp topping if you remember i use plus plus to show exactly which ones of the elements i would want to interact with boom almost there but we're now gonna have to go ahead and crazily pre-populate everything from a dynamic panels with you know other options i predefined before and so i'm just gonna open my folder with all those different bits and all those different options i had like so and go inside every single one i'm probably gonna make a default state first and foremost and make it like see-through because it's inactive by default 
And so I'm going to select those images and I'm just going to drop opacity to, let's say, 30 or something like that. So it's barely visible until user selects one and rolls to the next one. And then I'm going to also duplicate and make the first state, which is going to be, let's say, normal. And in the normal, I'm just going to bring back the opacity. Or actually, I'm just going to call it by its name. So it's sesame bread. And then duplicate, I have another one, which is plain bread. And then lastly, I have also some rye bread or something like that. And in plain, I'm just going to replace my bread with this, if I remember correctly, that's correct. That's the same exact bread for the other one. And then lastly, the right bread, which is gonna be totally different. And then the last bit is the right bread bottom, which is zero. As you can see, I'm using the coordinates to easily adapt it. And boom, now I created one of the items already. Default, which is inactive, sesame, plain, right. Boom, boom, boom. And now next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just add hotspots. You don't have to use hotspots. I see some comments which asking, hey, why would you use hotspots? You don't, but sometimes when let's say it's a PNG, um, not all of the objects are clickable and then it messes up. And I just like to do that for ease of use, quick addition of the clickables. You can do whatever you want to do. It's not, you know, worse or it's not better. It's, it's up to you. And so on click, as you can see, I selected on click on tap in interactions and I'm going to set, set panel state. I'm going to find DP bun, exactly that item. And then I'm going to do the previous, I'm going to probably animate. So slide, if I go there, we want to slide left. We probably don't, well, we can also animate out and animate in. That's totally fine. But the state, I want previous state, meaning the other one. Actually, the next state, wrong. And also don't forget to wrap from last so that it loops continuously. There is no stop. And then I'm just gonna copy the same behavior to the other one. Copy paste. And then just use previous and slide right. So we're just reversing the movement. Click OK and let's test it out. As you can see, it's there. I made it a bit too big, so I have to zoom out. But let's see how it goes. Boom, boom, boom. It's a bit choppy around the edges. Maybe I could have extended the dynamic panel so it starts from the arrow or even under it. But it's not too bad. Now we need to enable our ingeniousness in order to update that selected text field. And so every time we hit this, we're gonna change the panel state of this one. And if you trigger the dynamic panel, you're gonna see that you can add new interaction. And specifically what we're looking here is on panel changed. So every time it changes, we can detect what's the new state and then assign the right global variable to it. It's amazing. So let, let me show you exactly how it's done. We're gonna say if panel changed, if, Let's say I can add logic already. If the state of a panel this equals state sesame, we can add an action and say, first and foremost, update the variable value of bun to value. We can say, we can actually hard code it like sesame and then hit another time and then set text plus plus one bun, I think. Yeah, the name of that text field and set text to value of that variable which is defined bun click ok and now we are creating a update loop so every time we're gonna click on one of them we're gonna change the state and then we can detect if it's sesame then boom let's update it to sesame let me duplicate that for others don't remember to toggle it so that all of them are correct and then bun to Let's see what we else we have. I think we had plain and rye bread as well. So this is plain and I'm just gonna write plain and bare text. And that's correct. Also for a good measure, I would replace the cases so you don't get lost yourself. And now just another copy for a rye bread. So that's case three for us. 
rye bread, one of the last ones. Da, da, da. Value rye. And that should be sorted. And then the last bit is the selected one. So just in case we're gonna go back to a selected one to a disabled state, because users are always gonna do that. We're gonna change it to select one, which is basically unselected state. And boom, that should do it for that specific change. Let's see if that works. Boom, sesame, plane, rye, as you can see it's shifting. And if I go back, plane, sesame, pretty good. It does work, there is some glitch there, here and there, but I would leave it up to you to find out how to, you know, toggle the variables easier. There are just a lot of ways to do it and it's all about expressions here, or let's say I said, hey, if it's sesame, make it sesame as well. You could also state, let's say, set a variable name to name of a panel change, and then it's gonna have the panel change name. So let me show you exactly how it's done. I don't need to hard write it if I don't want to. I can just literally do this, state of a panel, this, and then again, state of a panel. Uh, however, since I defined my panel in a lowercase, the names which are gonna come out here are gonna be lowercase too. So let me show you how it's done. Sesame. Plane, rye, select one. Maybe that's what you were looking for. It's much more automatic because then you don't have to hard type the names of what should appear. We can just extract it. And if that's okay with you, let's proceed to other things. What I'm gonna go and do next is literally replicate the same thing for all of them. And I'm gonna do it speeding up. Boom, I sorted all of them out and it took around a couple of minutes to replicate once, you know, one is done, it's really easy to then make another one. But as you can see now, we have some sort of burger maker and it simply works. So that's how you do one of them. However, now let's say if you would want to take this creation I have and take it to the next page where let's say you send it to a chef to make your ultimate burger, what do you do? And the answer is the global variables because we already used them to put the new values in it. That's what we're really displaying. The values of those variables are going in these text fields. And so what I'm gonna do next is really, I'm just gonna copy this burger bad boy into the new page. And I have a new page which is burger results. I'm gonna paste it. I can put my burger there. So let's see, under it as well. I can also place another button, which is basically send to chef or buy or something along those lines. It really depends what's the purpose of your app. But let's say buy. And next is one thing what I want to do before we proceed is to just merge it a little bit. So it looks a bit more presentable. And by that, I mean just to have it like, you can see the layers of a burger overlapping or underlapping, send that underneath bun like so. So you can see exactly what's inside the burger. You can even make it, you know, shorter burger too. It's up to you because we are all in different sets. So that's about it. What I'm gonna do next is on the click of the next button, new interaction, click or tap, I'm just gonna open the burger results page, which is that one. Click OK. And when I load this page, what I'm gonna ask the actor to do is to set new interaction on page loaded, set panel state, and now we have all these panel states. And guess what's gonna happen next? With conditional statements, I can take out the value of the actual global variable and I can just specify it to make that same state. So let, let me show exactly what I mean by that. So I'm gonna do this, for, for example, dp condiment, or actually let's start with a bun. I'm gonna set it to state 
value and you can set the value if you want to but I'm just gonna go to functions delete that one insert variable or function and just select our global variable bun boom and now since the our global variable is really the exact name of a dynamic panel state it's gonna connect it to this dynamic panel and it's gonna display that state to us that's gonna be amazing and let me show you how it's gonna work so I'm gonna go back to our prototype and I'm just gonna select let's say sesame and I'm gonna go to next page and you're gonna see that this is selected and sesame is right here it does work and it does work magically and now if I would go back let's say and I would select something else like rye bread and I would go to the next page as you can see rye bread is now selected minus some cosmetic issues here with overlaps but it still works that's the best bit about it so I'm gonna go ahead and just pre-populate the same bits you know all you have to do is just add more targets so let's say condiment is another one again value you can delete all those bits and then just select from the list condiment your global variable name okay then another target which is topping again value boom and do so for all of the remaining ones and that's about it the only bit what I noticed before we preview is that the my burger buns are all over the place so I would want to probably make it something like this just in case other selections are being made and you could also you know do some validation as well when users select let's say your bits so you don't just go to the next screen without clarifying that everything is selected it's really up to you cool so that's that the only bit what I'm missing really is to align the layers uh, so I'm gonna go to outline and as you can see we have these all these dynamic panels for each of the burger layers right and so what I want to do is I want to put the condiment under the bun and then the cheese under the condiment oops right like so and then the patty and then the greens and then the second greens and that should do the trick and let's see if it actually works let's preview and if I select something crazy like let's say rye burger with mayo with some cheese with salmon with some racula and some tomato and I click next and boom my burger is there minus a bit of a glitch here Hmm, I wonder how to overcome it and if it's worth just splitting the buns into different dynamic panels. Hmm, maybe in the next video, but you get the drill and that's how you can make your own burger maker. Let me make another one because they look damn good. Simple as that. And that's the tutorial of how you can also make any type of product maker, burger maker, clothing maker, you name it. The application is limitless here and I'm sure you're gonna find it useful in the future when you encounter an issue which you can cover, solutionize, user test, you know, all those prototypes and update and put it into place. And so I hope that your submissions in the challenge are different so we can actually learn from each other and it's really interesting to see what you come up with with this limited time-wise and also quite vague brief and you know how you can do it but i'm sure that you're gonna find useful all of the results you know my tutorial included as well as what you submit and what other viewers submit thanks so much design squad i hope it's useful give a like subscribe to his channel and as per usual i'll see you next time